Hello! In this video, I will show you how to create a React Gantt chart app with a basic set of features, with the help of the DHT MLX library. We'll build the application using React class components. We'll explore how to use Gantt with React hooks in a separate video tutorial. Before we start, please make sure you have the latest stable version of Node.js installed on your computer. The very first thing we need to do is initialize the application structure. For this, we are going to use the Create React App tool. You can easily install it using the following command. Then we will create an app. Now we should go to the Gantt React folder and run the app for the first time. Great! The first steps are complete. As a result, our app should run on the local host. When we create our Gantt component, it will have the following structure. Each component is placed inside a separate folder named after the component. Each folder contains an index.js file, which explicitly specifies the classes exported by the component. Gantt.js contains the implementation of the component, and index.js will export it. And the outer code will import the folder. Therefore, if we add extra components to our Gantt, they will be defined under the same folder. It won't affect imports and clutter our folder structure. The first thing you need to do is add the Gantt package to your project. A free version of it can be added via NPM or Yarn. Then we'll add a React component wrapper for Gantt. We'll open the Gantt.js file and add the following code. Here we have created a React component that currently serves as a wrapper for the Gantt chart. Once our component is mounted, we initialize Gantt and attach it to the DOM. We can also populate it with the data passed via props. Note that since a free version of Gantt has no destructor, we do not define the component will unmount method. It also means that if we remove a component from React at some point, the instance of Gantt will stay in memory and will be reused next time when the component is mounted again. Then we'll add the following code to Gantt CSS. The next step is to add Gantt to our app component. Note that we use hard coded data for this sample. If we run the app now, we should see a Gantt chart with initial tasks on the page. If you add a Gantt chart to your app, you might need to configure advanced features like zooming the time scale. The time scale has a number of settings such as the number of rows, time step of each row, and format of labels. These settings can be changed dynamically. There is also a special API for zoom levels of the time scale. So you need to define several configuration presets for different zoom levels like hours, days, and months, and provide users with a UI control, usually a toggle or slider, to switch between zoom levels. We can implement it in React using the zooming API. Firstly, we will specify a couple of presets for timescale configuration in the Gantt component. Open Gantt.js to add the following function to it. Here we've defined all zoom levels that will be available in our Gantt. Each level has its own name, which will be used to activate it. Then we need the following code to enable the zoom levels. Bear in mind that repainting Gantt is quite a costly procedure. We'll make sure that it is called only when needed by checking if props have actually changed in Should Component Update. The Zoom plugin must be initialized by Gantt Ext Zoom init call before the first usage. Each time we call Gantt Ext Zoom set level, it will apply a specified zoom level and call the Gantt render function to repaint Gantt and apply changes. Thus, we don't call this function explicitly in our code. If we don't use the Zoom plugin and change the Gantt configuration manually, we need to call the Gantt repaint from the component did update hook. Other than that, everything should be straightforward. Now, Gantt chart scale should be defined with a Zoom property. If this property changes, we should call the render function to redraw Gantt with new scales. Let's add a UI for selecting the zoom level. We'll go with a simple toolbar and toggles. For this purpose, we need to create the toolbar component.
We add a group of radio buttons and provide the on-zoom change handler for a parent component. Here we add a toolbar to the app component and a handler for the change event. Now each time a user selects a specific zoom level in the toolbar, changes will be captured by the app, which will then pass an updated state to our Gantt. Once we have added the Gantt chart to our app, we may need to process changes that users make send changes to the backend, or update other components. We'll show how to capture changes and pass them somewhere in the app. You can capture Gantt changes using a special data processor module. It can serve to track user actions inside Gantt. Let's open the Gantt.js file and add the following method. We save the data processor instance returned from create data processor and clean it up in component will unmount. That's how we can capture all changes made in Gantt and send them to the parent component. When our Gantt component is unmounted, we want to destroy the data processor, so that when the component is mounted again, a clean instance of the data processor could be created. Now let's update the app component. Since we enabled the data processor, we can add a simple action log to our app to see how changes in Gantt can be processed. What we want to do here is to simply catch events create descriptive messages for them, and put those messages into the local state. After that, it is necessary to set a component that will display these messages on a page. First of all, let's create a new folder called Message Area and add a Message Area JS file to define the component. We don't need anything too fancy. Our Message Area will show the data using a basic HTML list. We will make the index.js file the point of import for this component. To display a message, you need to add styles for the message area. And finally, let's connect this component to the app. Note that we've created the index.js to simplify the import of the message area component. Message area may consist of multiple files, yet we import them via index.js as one module. Here we go. Each time a user changes something in Gantt, we call the promise handler in the app component and update the message area, which prints action details on the page. That's exactly what we wanted. If we run the app now and change some tasks or links, we should see appropriate messages under the Gantt chart. Today I have shown you how to use a Gantt chart in the React app, configure it, and process changes made by the user. Download the full source code of the React Gantt chart demo in our GitHub repository. Browse DHX Gantt webpage and download a free 30-day trial version. Our tech support team will be eager to help you during the evaluation. Watch other tutorials devoted to client-side and server-side integration and Gantt configuration.